Rachel, it's really nice to meet you. Um, I'd like to welcome you both to our Meet the Optician interview. Thank you. Thank you. Very excited. Um, Adam and Rachel, you're both co-owners of Perception Optical and you have an eyewear line, right? We, we carry one called More to Love. It's a partnership with another um, company that we're affiliated with, but we carry it exclusively here. Um, pretty much the only one in the Boston area that has it. That's awesome. Perfect. Well, I've heard wonderful things about your shop. Um, let's start with some questions. Excellent. Um, so Adam, you're a licensed optician, correct? That is correct. Yep. Right. How long have you been in the industry? And um, from the beginning, did you know you wanted to be an optician? Um, if not, like what led you down that path? So actually, it kind of has a, uh, a longer, a little uh, more lineage. Uh, I've actually been in the industry itself since 1995. My mother was an optician. Okay. I worked with her. So that was like, you know, like every kid's you know, your high school job. Yeah. And then when I moved here to Boston in 2005, uh, I kind of moved away from that. And I've been in sort of like modern times. I started with the opticianry here around 2013. Okay. So it's sort of where part two took place. <laughs> yeah. And one of the reasons why I got back into the industry was, was honestly was bad experiences being a legally blind optician how I was, the experience that I was getting at your, any other average optical shop. It wasn't insulting or anything like that. It was just, they just didn't know what to do. Yeah. With someone with a visual disability, which is no insult to them or anything, but it's like, they just weren't necessarily prepared for that. There's so much in this industry, right? So Perfect. that's awesome that you have the opportunity to really understand and connect with people who have the same challenges that you have, because I'm sure it's hard to go into a shop and not feel like exactly I had a lot of patients that I've told them I was legally blind and the first thing out of their mouth was like oh so you know exactly what I'm talking about then and I would reiterate again that's like no 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 everybody's everybody has the different areas that they're good at no one's you know the enemy or anything like that and they're like no I understand that perfectly but sometimes I need someone who just gets me and then it's like that's totally cool you came to the right place yeah perfect what um, challenges, personal, personal and in the shop, are you dealing with related to the COVID pandemic that we're all facing? Well, we both had COVID. Oh my back goodness. In March. Yep. Um, we were supposed to originally open the shop, and April 1st was our open day. Had planned that from the end of last year. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. Out the window. <laughs> so, on the personal front, having to have COVID deal with COVID in the midst of just like everyone starting to figure it out here. Um, but for the shop itself, we, we knew right away that we're like, we have to make this work. Um, let's ask people what they're comfortable with. So we've got all the COVID protocols in, masks. Um, one thing that we did do uh, early on was that we did private appointments because some people wanted that extra extra space like a buffer for one people uh, one person or maybe a, like a small family and that I think was really popular yep. and then as things kind of opened up more in um, Massachusetts we're in Arlington we opened up afternoon walk-in hours so it's kind of like a hybrid model and just like everyone everyone other every other industry how to make it work yep. <laughs> figure and it out make it work <laughs> we asked patients you know what do you feel comfortable with so give like extra extra layer of confidence with the patient Along with the signs, of course, you have to wear your mask. And also to mention too, the little extra level of trust with the patients, because it's hard to see yourself with a mask on with the glasses. So we would let them go outside with the mirror so they could take their mask off mm -hmm. and see themselves mm -hmm. and, see and that. come right back in. How do we help them pick? Because that's like half of your face that's covered. <gasps> So yeah, that's so hard. And one thing we did too, because with with the appointments, you can, you know, we can uh, take a lot of information up front. And one of the things was snap us a picture because we can get a sense of what your head looks like, your face looks like, your coloring, so that when you're coming in here, we can already suggest some things, knowing what your face looks like without a mask on. And a lot of people appreciated that, along with their prescriptions too. Again, with low vision, people would, patients would email me, you know, they'd be a minus eight or a minus seven. And it's like, okay, now I know exactly how to prep. And with the face shape, I, we can immediately streamline the glasses that will work best for them. And sometimes we'd ask them questions like, what are your favorite colors? What do you like to do? A little more personalization before they even get here. Taking a huge amount down to like way easier. That's super incredible. A way to be ahead of the game on that. <laughs> Whatever we can do to make things easier for people, that's just sort of our, our MO in general. Like, I wouldn't say we're lazy, but we're just very 
very like what's move the most efficient thing. Yeah, <laughs> being able to know that like there we are listening to them, but also too that just like any of us, we have stuff to do today. Yeah. That's huge. Perfect. So um, since you're the optician, what is your favorite thing about being an optician? Honestly, it is as weird as this sounds. Is that being legally blind? And I've had the patients who come in and they put on the glasses is the, it's very humbling when they say to me, Adam, something's wrong. Well, what's the matter? I know my prescriptions are exactly the same with both my glasses, but I see so much better with these glasses. I don't know what you did. I said, well, I just took the time to make sure that everything was correct in your measurements, make sure the fit was correct, make sure you had the proper lenses. And I says, and I tell them, it's like, do not worry right now. You're paying me the best compliment for someone with a disability. Yeah. I can never see perfectly like you guys. My visual equivalent is 2200 with the glasses. Wow. And for them to say, something's not right. I see way better with these lenses than I do, but the prescription is exactly the same. That to me is them like, that's the best thing. That's the best part of the job. Yeah. Right there. Huge compliment. That's, that's incredible. Especially if they've worn glasses their whole life. You're like. And they're like, what did you do? And I'm like, nothing. I'm an optician. I did exactly what I'm supposed to do. Passionate about what you do. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, how has it been to open a business, um, as a husband and wife team? It, I'm glad that we've been together, um, going on 13 years. So we've been through, you know, knowing each other, our, our careers are sort of in tandem with each other. Um, it's been honestly a lot of fun because we were, we were already kind of doing it anyway, just the way that we would bounce ideas off each other and just sort of seeing, you know, Adam's struggles with trying to find um, just being being visually disabled in general and then going into the optical industry. Like a lot of a lot of things that we talk about, we're like, why don't we just make this for ourselves? Like the things that I've learned with my business, the experience that he has. Um, it's a lot of fun. We do try to like, you know, when the door closes, it's that's done with the work day. So then we go home and chill. Yep. Um, we're 5 p.m. Yeah. We're, we're done with talking about work. We're, go pretty, home. we're pretty good with that, actually. Um, I think that is a, is a key thing. And, you know, in general, just he and I have always been good communicators and um, just making it work and having fun while we're doing it. The best thing is, is that is, I'm sure you've either heard this before from other couples too. We are each other's biggest cheerleaders mm -hmm. and we are very honest with our opinions. When someone says, what do you think about this idea? I definitely expect Rachel and she ex expects me to really give an honest opinion. Yeah. And some things like when it comes to the optics, like the science and Adam is always <laughs> Head. I'm more of the marketing, the operations, the sort of like getting people in. Then once they're here, it's it's him. So we really do respect those uh, roles. I'm the science that we've geek done. of the group, and she's the one who's like, "Oh, let's. This is so cute." And it's like, "Well, let's take a look." <laughs> so we definitely compliment on that. Eyes, the science end, the fashion end, perfect. That's awesome. Just stick to what you're like the best. Stick at. to our strengths. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I know we mentioned this earlier, but what is the More to Love eyewear collection, and how has it been received in your shop? Sure. Um, well, so the More to Love eyewear collection, I'm actually wearing one of them now. It is meant to help people with larger faces, usually plus size faces, fit into glasses better. Um, you know, it's one of those things that I know for me, I was hesitant getting glasses for so long, mainly because I couldn't find something that this looked good on me. I was squeezing things in. So um, about maybe f uh, four or five years ago, I, I partnered with a company based out of Dallas, Texas, to, de to design and, and share um, an eyewear collection that is for larger faces, larger bodies. Um, but really, they're just, you know, just those little bit of tweaks here and there. Super popular, very, very colorful. We got some new stuff coming in now. Um, and it's been wonderful because so many people uh, here in the Boston area, but it's, it's national too, have just felt like finally, like I, I don't have to worry about um, a fit and also some sometimes women get kind of pushed into even though I wear is unisex just that that sense of like well we don't have anything here for you let's that eliminates that awkward feeling like you don't belong so having um, a diversity of, of sizes here plus size petite things for low vision things for just general like faces um, is a selling point for us because not a lot of places that we have found have specialized in sort of like the unique personality and lifestyle of particular people. Um, and it's fun. <laughs> it is fun. What are uh, one to two core values of perception and, and why do they matter to you? Yeah, we both Adam and I, if you can't tell, we like people. <laughs> <laughs> we really want that relationship. 
first and foremost. And with with the world, like, you know, internet, people can buy things online and people do that. But I feel that the, the answer has sort of been, I did it. It wasn't what I wanted. I want to go back to the personal. I want to go back to really curating what is good for my eyes. So this putting people first in the relationships, number one, um, you know, celebrating how you see the world. Like that's literally our tagline. And that means us getting to know you and knowing what you like and things like that. So that's a really, that's a really core one core piece. And I would say the second core piece is the quality of the lenses and the quality of the eyewear when that's really where Adam's strengths come in for that. Exactly. How, as me and you again, how would it, what it used to be as an optician probably 50 years ago, yeah. where it was like a tailor. You would physically go in and we would take the time to custom make that frame for you and you only. And it was like, say, probably around the 80s and 90s where someone came up with a good idea. And it is a good idea to like, you know what, let's see if we can mass produce this idea for this specific market, which is great for that market. Nothing wrong with it. But we want to do more of a tailored fit back how it used to be. And enjoy it and have a great experience and mm -hmm. leave happy. That's, that's incredible. Um, so just for fun, what is your favorite way to unwind at the end of the day? <laughs> um, video games. <laughs> we play a lot of old school video. We're on Mario 3 right now. We're going, we're revisiting the classics. Um, and then, you know, Netflix, The Simpsons, again, always on at the, like that, like that sends us off to sleep. It really is like trying to just turn off like the work mode. Um, and relax and chill. Uh, sometimes we go for walks, we cook dinner, it's just, you know, what probably everyone else is doing. Um, but being, being home more with the pandemic has, we did, we did, we were able to do some upgrades to our house. Like our, we got a new couch. It was more comfortable. So <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things where it's like, why did we wait? It's like, why didn't we have this nice new recliner couch during the pandemic <laughs> yeah. instead of our old couch, which was killing us? Yeah. You're like, I'm spending more time here. This needs to be better. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yeah, trying to be, you know, comfortable, relaxed, and uh, just not carrying, you know, stress of, of just living and working into into the evening. That's like a big thing that we're, we're again, we're, we're really good about that. Like, if one of us starts to talk about work, the other one will be like, can we save this for tomorrow or write it? Like, we, that's just, we have to have that work-life balance even more so. And you don't want to burn out. That's, it sounds like you both have such a great set up to like just have wonderful success and just really rock it and hopefully after the, the pandemic it's just going to skyrocket hopefully <laughs> absolutely awesome well i really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day i'm sure you are very busy um and i look forward to meeting you in person one day absolutely. i know i hope so too awesome well have a good one <laughs> thank you too